Hey there, YouTube. I'm Douglas, and welcome back to another devlog. I'm building a voxel game engine, a video game where the entire world is made of tiny, fully editable cubes. Part of my end goal for this project is that users should be able to create their own games and experiences in the engine by coding mods. So this month, I've been working hard on creating a robust, Rust-based modding API for my game engine. I thought I would structure this video as a bit more of an exposition, so I'll showcase all of the new features that I've added and talk a little bit about the tech behind them. Let's get started. For those who are unfamiliar, a mod is an independent package or bit of code that a game will load at runtime from the user. In my engine, mods are Rust programs that are compiled to WebAssembly, or WASM for short. If you're not familiar with WASM, it's a really interesting and cool technology. WASM is a low-level bytecode format for uh, defining programs, for defining code. So the way WASM works is you can write C or C++ or Rust code and compile it to WebAssembly and it gets compiled to this platform agnostic uh, intermediate format that in theory should be able to run on any computer or any device. Then you ship your WASM module off to an end user and the end user has a WebAssembly runtime that ingests the WASM file and then interprets it or compiles it to the user's um, native machine code. So why did I choose WebAssembly for my modding system? Well, for one thing, WebAssembly is extremely secure. WASM programs run in their own address space, meaning they can't read passwords out from your computer's main memory or access your file system without permission or anything like that. They're totally sandboxed. So by defining plugins and mods in WebAssembly, I'm preventing some of the issues we've seen plaguing the Minecraft modding community in the past few years, where mods have actually turned out to be viruses. In addition, WebAssembly is completely platform independent. This means that a mod developer can compile a plugin once to WASM, upload it to a game server, and then all of the game clients can download and run the mod seamlessly, no matter if they're on Windows, Mac, Linux, or even running the game inside a web browser. But enough talk, let's see it working in action. So I began the process of implementing modding by defining a couple of Rust crates and macros that would allow me to define traits like the one you see here. This trait allows mods to get some information about timing in the game, specifically the time that each frame takes, and the total time that the game client has been running. Now this trait is implemented internally in my engine, but thanks to some fancy Rust macro magic, WASM plugins are actually able to call methods on this trait. This is an example Rust project that I've set up, and this is all you need to create a mod in my engine. I've defined an object type that will be instantiated when the mod loads. This type defines a dependency on the frame timing trait, which is the trait that's defined on the host in the engine. And then the mod is programmed to print out the frame time every frame by calling this host trait. I will compile the mod now using Rust's package manager, Cargo. And once that's done, it's time to actually import this mod into the engine and see it running. So I'm here in my game engine, and if I hit escape, you can see the first of a couple new user interfaces that I've added. I've added a simple little pause menu here, nothing fancy, but it feels much more polished than the free-floating buttons and menus that I previously had for exiting the game and whatnot. For now, we're interested in the Mods button, and if I click on that, it opens up another new user interface that I spent some time creating. On the left here, we've got a list of the mods that are loaded, and on the right, we've got a description pane for each mod. And you can see we actually already have one mod loaded into the engine here. Uh, that would be the player controller mod, but I'll come back to that one in a minute. So I'm going to click the plus in the bottom right, and I will select the WASM file that was generated when I compiled our project earlier. 
clicking OK causes the mod to be loaded into the game, and if I head over to the game console, you can now see that indeed the mod is running, it's just printing out this little message every single frame, and telling us the frame time. Now there's a really cool part of this system that I want to touch upon, and that is hot reloading. So if I head back to the uh, Rust project, which defines this mod, and let's say I change something slightly, I, uh, for example, update the text in this sort of print line statement, and I recompile it. If I head back to the game engine now, and we look at the console again, you can see that the game engine automatically detected the mod was recompiled, and it reloaded it. And now the game engine is running the new version of the mod. And I think this sort of hot code reloading is just super cool. All of that is just about loading mods, though. Once a WASM mod is loaded, what can it actually do? Well, so far I've exposed two interfaces for mods to use. One system allows for reading user input, and the other system allows for drawing GUIs. Let's start with the user input system. As you can see, I'm moving my character about on screen using my keyboard keys, and I'm also changing the camera angle by moving my mouse. The difference between now and previous versions of my engine is that in previous versions of my engine, these debug controls were hard-coded. Now, they're actually running in a mod, so all of the logic for moving the character and looking around that logic is all contained within a WASM mod. That's the player controller mod that you saw in the mods menu. The user input system is actually pretty powerful. If I open the pause menu up again, but this time I hit the settings button, the first thing that pops up is this controls interface. And this menu allows the end user to completely customize the key bindings and mouse buttons that they use to play the game. So each of these um, settings here, like walk forward, walk backward, um, toggle pointer lock, each of these actions are defined inside the player controller mod. And the player controller mod also provides some default key bindings that each action should have. But then my game engine um, takes care of the settings portion of this, takes care of allowing the end user to rebind controls to whatever they want, and that sort of thing. So this means that the user input system gives players a high degree of flexibility while abstracting away the details of rebindable controls from mods. Mods don't have to worry about any of these settings or control bindings or whatnot. They just define an action and some default key bindings, and everything just works. While I was adding this, I also added support for controllers. I'm not sure how useful this will be at this time, Maybe if I ever port my game to a console, it'll be handy. But here you can see me um, controlling the game and placing and deleting voxels using a PS4 controller. And while it's maybe not the most useful thing in the world, it was super fun to implement and play around with. Also, mods can draw shapes and user interfaces on top of the game world. So for example, this crosshair at the center of the screen and this text down at the bottom are being drawn by the player controller mod. They are not a part of the core game engine. Mods can draw a much more complicated UI too, using the eGUI library, which is a very common, but really, really well-designed Rust library for drawing GUIs. For example, here's the eGUI widget gallery window, with all of the eGUI widgets being drawn from a plugin. And you can see that I'm able to interact with the buttons, type into the text box, that kind of thing. So this will come in super duper handy later on when I begin um, implementing, for example, a building system or an inventory system within a mod. That's about it for this video. As you can probably surmise, a lot of the past month has been really polishing the engine and adding features to take it from being a tech demo closer to being an actual game that users might want to play. I spent a lot of time developing libraries related to this modding system, um, everything from defining WASM plugins to getting them loaded in a Rust project to defining GUIs with them, and so if you're interested in the details or how any of the WebAssembly stuff works in more detail, please check out my GitHub because all of the projects listed on screen are open source. 
Otherwise, if you have any other comments or questions, please leave them down below. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to support me on my development journey. And with that, thank you very much for watching.